Hello, welcome to the Friday, June 11th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Quick diary today, just looking at some of these cookie warning banners. You may have seen them in particular in Europe, where a website gives you the option to set cookies or not set cookies, or even select what kind of cookies you are willing to accept. Truth, however, is that uh, these banners are often really more show than actual action, meaning that cookies are often being set before the banner is even displayed. And it's not just the websites that are to blame for this. Often these cookies uh, come from middle boxes, content delivery networks that add these cookies in order to, well, track users. That's what cookies are typically used for and to achieve some form of statefulness in requests being passed through the content delivery network. I did a very quick and dirty test on the top 100 websites using curl just to see how many of these websites are returning set cookie headers to the first request they received and at least 30% of the websites did and a couple of additional checks with the browser indicates that the real number is probably much higher. Well, is there anything that you should do about this? Uh, Probably not. Uh, Just be aware of it. Uh, Yes, you are being tracked and uh, browser makers are actually sort of getting a little bit on top of this by restricting uh, what cookies can do and how they're being used. Well, it's time to update your Citrix appliances again. Citrix Application Delivery Controller, or ADC, Citrix Gateway, as well as Citrix SD-WAN WANOP need to be updated to fix two vulnerabilities that Citrix rated as high. The first one I don't think is actually such a big deal. It's a denial of service vulnerability. However, in order to exploit it, you do need to be in the same layer to network segment. Typically doing denial of service once you are connected to the same network segment is kind of very hard to defend against, if not impossible. So I wouldn't really uh, worry about this too much. The second vulnerability is a little bit more interesting. And this is a SAML authentication hijack through a phishing attack. And apparently it is possible to steal a valid user session. Now, there are no details uh, released about this, so I have to guess a little bit what this is about. This is likely not traditional phishing where someone would steal your username and password. Instead, they are stealing your SAML uh, user credentials. So uh, that would be the SAML assertion that you're getting back uh, from Citrix ADC or Citrix gateway in this case of course uh, this does mean that you have this configured uh, in citrix which isn't usually the case by default but uh, not an uncommon configuration by any means so interesting to see uh, what will come out of this and uh, whether additional details are being released about this particular vulnerability And we got an interesting vulnerability in VoIP Monitor. VoIP Monitor is essentially a packet sniffer that allows you uh, to keep track of voice over IP connections, uh, but it has an interesting cross-site scripting vulnerability. And while I don't think it's necessarily that important uh, of a product necessarily, the nature of the vulnerability, I think, is a real good lesson in that you have to be careful how you use data that you are receiving from untrusted sources. And if you are watching network traffic, that's certainly an untrusted source, even if it is your network, because after all, one reason you monitor monitor this network is that it's sometimes being abused for attacks. And apparently what's happening here is that an attacker is able to exploit cross-site scripting vulnerabilities in VoIP monitor by crafting specific payloads for these monitored voice over IP protocols. So whatever data you use in a web application before you display it, make sure it's encoded properly with respect to the output context it's being used in. And there are no exceptions. There is no real trusted data because you never know how the source of the data actually encoded the data originally. 
And finally, we got patches for a number of uh, message uh, queue uh, products. Uh, now, uh, these products are often used, for example, in IoT environments and the like, where you have a lot of messages like updates from IoT devices coming in that need to be processed. In order to process them efficiently, you essentially queue them. And that's what these tools are for. They tend to use a number of different protocols, MQTT, message queuing telemetry transport is one of these and we do have an advisory from synopsis they looked at the parsers for this protocol in a couple of popular mq software packages rapid mq EMQX and Vern MQ. All of them suffered from denial of service vulnerabilities if they received specific malformed messages. Take a look at your particular software and uh, make sure that you're up to date since this is certainly exploitable. Again, if you are, for example, accepting messages from remote sensors that you don't necessarily control. And uh, these products are used in a number of different contexts, not just sort of for IoT devices. Also, some of these uh, products are wrapped into other products, so may not necessarily that easy to recognize that you're using one of these three affected uh, packages. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.